Beyonce, our, our school-wide focus statement. Jacob Hyatt Magnus School, students know how to see it, read it, write it, say it, prove it, give me five. Hyatt School-wide instructional focus is on helping students to read critically and answer completely, intelligently, based on the text that they read. And then we have two more ants, and they're doing something different. They're not talking. What does the caption say underneath that one? Red ants transferring food. That's right. And we know when we have... As an expanded learning time school, we, we have the gift of, of additional time. When we uh, first redesigned our school day, we put a, a huge emphasis on literacy instruction. We expanded our blocks of literacy instruction to two-hour dedicated literacy blocks every day for every student. We knew then that the data was saying that our kids needed more work in, in lit basic literacy skills. The instructional focus work allowed us to refine that work and make the extra time that we have in expanded learning time that much more valuable. We dedicated two complete professional development days, full days, um, with our staff at the beginning of this process to determining, you know, what direction we should go in in terms of this instructional focus. We knew that we had lots of great practices in place and were doing a lot of things really well. Um, but at that time, we truly did feel like maybe we were doing too many things. We provided all of the data that we had available for the teachers. We have some early literacy data available to kindergarten, uh, preschool, kindergarten, first grade teachers. We have some state uh, testing data available to third through sixth grade teachers. And we have some um, quarterly data from these computer generated tests that we use called measures of academic progress, which um, all of which provide what we call strand specific data for students. Not only do they show us how our children are performing in both English language arts and mathematics, but they'll show us specifically which strands within those subjects um, students are doing very well on and other student and students are having difficulty with. So teachers examined that data over the course of these two days and it, it, it was very, very clear and very evident. Over and over and over, teachers would say, well, we have really large gaps in our students' ability to answer open response questions. Open response questions in mathematics and open response questions in English language arts and open response questions in the science exam. So it was great consensus very, very quickly that if we concentrated our efforts on helping our students improve with these open response questions, we'd have the most impact for our efforts. Our work around instructional focus has resulted in three best practices that we developed as a whole school faculty. Our first best practice is that teachers will dedicate time within every day in their classroom um, to address the skills of open response. Maybe we're taking a whole question and working it all the way through. Maybe we're working just on one part. But every day there's something going on related to open response. The second piece is that teachers will model. And we expect teachers to be doing modeled writing, which is teacher doing the writing, and thinking out loud as they approach, read, unpack, and answer open response questions. So if we turn to our article with my pen in my hand, as I read, I'm looking for reasons why they would spend so much money on whatever Vortex 2 is. The teacher is showing the students how he or she thinks. You're doing it so that you're walking through it with your students and they can see a model of an effective way to, to solve the problem or answer the question. And then finally, we examined lots of different graphic organizers and we determined that the T-chart which is just basically um, a, a two-column uh, entry that um, would work best for students, again, across the grade levels, to help them to organize their thoughts around these open response questions. So I want two claims. So I would have claim one and claim two, which I can really just number here because they're going to go right on my T-chart. So what about my evidence? What about my details from the text? How many pieces of evidence do I need for each claim? I think that the most effective piece of our instructional focus work is that everyone is doing very similar, if not the same, type of practice in every classroom. And I think that truly is what's making the most difference for us academically, because we have seen great gains in our students' uh, academic um, work. Claim one 
collaboration time at Hyatt is key to keep best practice going throughout the school. We really believe that if you are able to talk with other teachers and share ideas and share knowledge, your teaching is only going to get better and stronger. Thanks to the Expanded Learning Time grant, we have extra time weekly for collaboration. And it, we meet 45 minutes once a week. This was an open response question. Um, they did about the brother and sister story. Mm -hmm. The question was, um, how do older brothers and When they meet in common planning time, we're constantly asking them to revisit and think about and report back and talk about what they're doing in their particular classrooms around those best practices and that focus work. That keeps, again, a level of accountability and keeps it, it you know, foremost in people's minds that this is important work and that we expect it to be in every classroom every day. One of the challenges of this type of work is something we call keeping the focus on the focus. We have this kind of press-ready statement uh, around our instructional focus, which is um, real adult-friendly, certainly, but it didn't have great meaning for children. So one of the first things that we did is we developed what we call a kid-friendly focus statement, which is part of our morning announcements every day. Jacob Hyatt Magnet School students know how to see it, read it, write it, say it, and prove it. And they say, give me five. We have these posted all around the building, both our formal instructional focus statement and the kid-friendly instructional focus statement. We're constantly working to keep people current in terms of what we're hoping to do with students. Every staff meeting, every professional development opportunity, every common planning time with teachers has some component um, are major components of our instructional focus embedded in them. I'm making a little note to myself, like a little star on those two paragraphs, because I might be able to get some supporting evidence there for my claims. There are many ways that the expanded learning time has helped me to implement the focus strategies. I have time to do all of it, and it sounds simple, but I have time to dedicate to open response every day, and still time to dedicate to other aspects of the curriculum time to meet with our colleagues and discuss children's work, discuss strategies that we're using in the classroom, go visit other classrooms. One of the important themes in our instructional focus work is the continuity, is um, teachers using the same language, teachers using these same best practices. What we've learned, of course, about teaching children is that when they have a common language to come to understand things, that helps them and promotes their success.